Hello, I'm Esteban Quintero. I'm going to be presenting my Challenge Assessment 7, the heat exchanger design project. So this is our original scenario. Um, we have a heat exchanger that's being used uh, where water is used to cool oil within the engine. Um, so these are our engine oil properties. We have a mass flow rate of uh, 8 kilograms per second, specific heat at uh, 2,220 joules per kilogram Kelvin, evaluated at the uh, inlet temperature of the oil at 100 degrees Celsius, with our uh, outlet temperature of the oil 80 degrees Celsius. Um, the properties of our water is that two, our mass flow rate is at two kilograms per second. Um, our specific heat is evaluated at that inlet temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, which is at 4,182 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Um, and um, for the overall heat transfer coefficient, my birthday is uh, June 11, which leaves us with um, a heat overall heat transfer coefficient of 1607 watts per meter squared Kelvin. So uh, the heat exchanger design that I decided to go with is a double pipe counterflow heat exchanger. I selected this because it's effective in handling high temperature differentials. Um, so this is a model of um, what this looks like, this heat exchanger. Um, assumptions we're making a steady state, there's no phase changes, constant specific heats, and there's negligible pressure drop. So um, this is how we go about solving for our system. So first we solve for the uh, heat transfer rate or Q dot. This is done with um, our properties of the oil. We end up with uh, 3,000 3, or with 300, 355.2 kilowatts. Um, then we solve for our Q max. This was um, evaluated with our water um, and then the oil in minus the water in. Um, this gives us 669.12 kilowatts. Um, next step after that, we solve for effectiveness, which is the uh, heat transfer rate of the system over the maximum possible. Um, we end up with 0 0.53 as our effectiveness. Next, we solve for um, the outlet temperature of the water. Um, so we set, we use this equation, um, the effectiveness is equal to water in minus, or water out minus water in, then oil in minus water in. Um, we end up with 62.5 degrees Celsius on that uh, outlet temperature for the water. Next, we uh, the way I solve the system, I use the log mean temperature difference. Um, so our first delta T1 is oil in minus water out. Um, that ended us with 37.5 degrees Celsius. Um, our second was um, the oil out minus water in. Um, that ends up with 60, 60 degrees Celsius. Um, and then when we plug it into our log mean temperature difference equation, we end up with 47.9 degrees Celsius. Um, next, to solve for our surface area then, we use our Q dot that was calculated right here, and our um, U that was um, given to us through birthday, the day, and the month, um, plus the multiplied by the log mean temperature difference. When we solve for the surface area, I end up with 4.61 meters squared for the heat exchanger surface area. Results and conclusion. So the surface area directly influences our heat transfer rate. Um, the reason why I went with the surface area um, for the design is because it's needed to meet those same operational requirements of a heat exchanger so we could maintain that same heat transfer rate. Um, a smaller, if we went smaller, that of course would change our heat transfer rate, um, but we wanna maintain it at that same um, rate that we already have. And if we also increase that surface area, it would also change the uh, heat transfer rate, but on top of that, it would increase our footprint and material cost of the heat exchanger, which is what we don't want.